Okay, this is part two of volumes and cross sections, triangles, and semicircles, lesson 8.8 for the AP calculus curriculum. Uh, calculating volumes of solids with known cross sections using definite integrals. We are going to just kind of go over in this video the basic idea of how what we're doing when we calculate cross sections, that is semicircle or a triangle. So let's go look at some fun stuff. Same process just different geometry. Let's look at what we're gonna do here when we calculate. If we have a function f of x, and let's say that the region is bound, we're gonna do a triangle first. Uh, let's say the region is bound by, let's go from A to B here, where we have triangular cross sections. We're still going to draw one rectangle in our region. We're going to pull that one rectangle out. Its width is still going to be dx. We're going to look at this as a triangular cross section. It doesn't really matter what shape the triangle is. Sometimes they will tell you it's a right triangle or a uh, um, an isosceles right triangle, but it really doesn't matter because what we really need is a relationship between the height of the triangle and the base. And in this case, if this was a function f of x, then the height or the, the, the length of the base there would be f of x. And we would need expression. Let's look at this one where I had this problem here. Let's say that the height was two units longer than the base. Then the height for this, uh, the height for this triangle Oops. would be f of x plus 2. And so if this was the volume, if we want to calculate the volume of one of these cross sections, remember that the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. And the volume of a, of a prism like this is going to be the area of the base times the height. We're always going to use the dx as the height. So we need the area of that triangle. And so the area of the triangle is going to be 1 half times the base f of x times the height f of x plus 2 times the height of the prism dx. So that's going to be the volume of one cross section here. So here, if we're doing the region from A to B, then we need to integrate that one cross section. I thought I had still had my pen. We're going to integrate from A to B that volume expression for one cross section because when we do that, we're in, we're summing the infinite number of cross sections. So I'm going to pull the constant out, like we know we can. And multiply what's in, or sorry, what's inside the integral is gonna be f of x times f of x plus two. Oops. All times dx. And that's how we do it. Once we have an expression for the height related to the base, then we just use the area of the triangle as the base of a prism times the height dx, and we integrate that from you know, across our limits of integration. We do a semicircle, it's a little bit different. Let's look at the same kind of problem. If we had a function f of x that we were going to the region bound by x equals a and x equals b, and we're going to have semicircular cross sections. We're going to draw one rectangle. We're going to pull that one rectangle out. Its width is dx or dy if we're integrating with respect to y. This one, if this is f of x, the length of that rectangle is f of x. So now recall, if we're doing a semicircular, now the face of the prism is this semicircle. And recall too that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So the area of a semicircle is going to be pi r squared over 2. 
So the key here to finding the area of the base of this prism, this cross section, the semicircular part, is to find the radius. Well, the radius is going to be one half f of x when we're doing semicircles. Or if this was the difference between two curves, it would be one half the difference. Whatever one half of the length of the rectangle is, that's going to be the radius. So the volume of this expression is going to be, we're going to integrate this from A to B. We're going to integrate the volume expression for one single. Whoops, we didn't do the one single. We're supposed to do that first. Let me do that. Told you we'd draw, we'd write the expression for the volume of one individual cross section. Let's find the volume of this one. So if that's the radius, then the volume is going to be pi over two times, this is going to be the area of the face of that semicircular cross section. So this is going to be pi times the radius squared, which is going to be one half f of x squared and then times the height of the prism there, dx. So that's the volume of one cross section for a semicircular cross section. To get the volume of the solid generated, we're gonna integrate that from A to B. I'm gonna pull the pi over two out since it's a constant. I'm gonna leave the one half in there since we haven't squared it yet. Remember, you're just gonna set the integrals up a lot of times. If you have to do this, most times it's going to be in a calculator when you have to do this by hand or, or when you have to actually calculate the volume. So if you enter it like that, then you're going to be safe. Just the geometry, understanding the geometry is what's going to get you the correct expressions. Trying to memorize all these different formulas is going to be too much. Think about the geometry. Understand it when you've got one of these three dimensional cross sections, you need the area of the base and then multiply that times dx. That's how high it is. And that will give you the volume of the entire cross section. You integrate all the cross sections from the lower integ integration limit to the upper limit integration limit. And that's what gives you the volume of the solid created with that cross section. That was part two.